Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. The channel I like to call Rico's Garage. Today what I'm going to show you is a short follow-up video from the video I did previously on making the Cummins sending units work with your square body Chevrolet gauges. I'll throw up a link here. You can check out that video if you haven't already seen it. In that video, I had made mention that I would do another video showing you how to make the Dodge Alternator work with the square body Chevrolet charging system. Now, before you get all bent out of shape, yes, I know you can buy a one wire alternator that will fit right on that 12 valve. I also know there's guys that will adapt the GM style alternator to work with that bracket. But the one wire alternator is pretty pricey and the GM style alternator will have to buy an alternator. There's nothing wrong with the new Dodge alternator that came with the donor truck and I've got the wiring harness and everything which I'll show you here in a little bit. So that's why I'm going that way. And many of you may be in the same boat. But also, not only is this little bit of information I'm going to show you beneficial if you're doing a swap, this information will also be vital if you have a second gen Dodge truck or any Chrysler product for that matter in which the PCM is used to regulate the voltage. Anything from mom's caravan to a Jeep Wrangler, Jeep Cherokee, Dodge truck, gas or diesel, doesn't matter. Chrysler for a lot of years, the PCM to tell the alternator when to turn on and off. So if that goes bad inside the computer, which happens pretty regularly, you have to buy a new computer. This saves you from that. I actually learned this trick when I had a Jeep Wrangler TJ that that had happened to. Uh, quit charging. Everything else worked fine, but it wouldn't charge. Come to find out the computer was smoked. I didn't want to buy a computer. I was stuck in the middle of nowhere, and I found out this little trick. Okay, so what is this little trick? Well, I will show you. You're going to need just a few basic things. If you're watching this because your Chrysler product isn't charging, you already have all the wiring in place. All you need to go buy is the external regulator that Chrysler used for a lot of years. I'm talking like 71, 72 until late 88, 89, somewhere around there, whenever they went into having the PCM control it. Regardless, you need that regulator and you need the pigtail to go with it. For the sake of simplicity, when you go to your local parts store, because you can literally find this at any parts store, it's that common. Go up there telling you need a regulator and a pigtail for an 88 Dodge D150, and you'll be set. Okay, once you have that, it's just a matter of some simple wiring, which I've outlined here on the dry erase board. Your alternator has three posts on it. The bigger post of the three simply goes from the alternator to the positive post of the battery. So if you're doing a swap, just make you a wire like that. If you have a vehicle that already has a charging system, that wire is naturally already in place. The other two posts on the back of the alternator, and these are the factory wiring colors, doesn't really matter. Uh, one goes from one small post to the uh, lower post on the regulator. You can see it's kind of in a triangle shape. Just straight there, bam, bam. The other, the top post on the regulator, goes to the other post on the alternator. Now these two don't matter if you switch them side to side, but this up here is critical. This top one has to be teed off and go to 12 volt ignition hot. Otherwise, if you don't have a switch in there, your alternator is going to stay energized and constantly and drain the battery when the vehicle's not running. So that's it. Two wires there, one key hot, one to the battery. Done. Simple. Simple wiring, simple parts. I bought the regulator and the pigtail off of Rock Auto just because I had a little bit of time, but you can literally get it anywhere. And I think I've got less than 20 bucks in both of those. I'm going to leave the camera on this for a few seconds just so you can stop it, pause it, make notes, whatever you need to do. And then I'll go over to the truck and show you what we did on that. Okay, now that you got the wiring diagram, let's show you something other than my third grade drawing. Let's show you what everything actually looks like on the truck. Here you can see we have the second gen Dodge alternator in the factory brackets. No big deal there. I saved 
all the wiring from my donor truck. This goes to the two small posts like we said. It's got a block and it splits out to two wires. There's the factory wires you can see green and blue. Chrysler again used those collars for a lot of years. This one off of the small stud is going to go right directly to the positive post on the battery. Up here there, there is our Dodge external regulator that I told you about. Again bottom post, green wire and I apologize for all this. I haven't bundled it up yet. I wanted to show you guys what everything looks like before we did that. Follow along the engine right to the alternator. The blue wire you can see goes to that top post of the regulator and your Dodge harness that's the green wire your Dodge harness is already split off with a factory soldered connection heat shrunk so that saves you some time there uh, this wire goes to the regulator like I said this wire spliced into the factory uh, exciter wire that originally went to the alternator on the uh, original engine in this truck. Sorry. Sorry for the pause there. I believe it's brown in color, but you'll know there was a... Uh, when the truck had the gas engine, it had uh, a wire... It had a wire on the big post the alternator, and then it had two more wires went into the regulator. A larger gauge wire and a small gauge. The small gauge is the one you want. Tee it off into there, and that'll give you your key hot power. That will make your Cummins, no matter what you put it in, whether you put it in a square body Chevy, Ford, whatever, that will make it charge. That regulator will tell it when to turn on and off, keep you from overcharging, and if this truck breaks down in the middle of nowhere, I can literally find a second gen alternator just about anywhere, and that regulator just about anywhere. So, uh, I thought about the one wire alternator, but it's pricey and again if I get broke down somewhere I want to know I can get off the shelf parts for this thing so that's what we went with hopefully that answers your question it's pretty simple once you uh, once you see it broke down that way and again share this video because not only can it help Cummins people but if your buddy's broke down in the middle of nowhere with his Wrangler that's not charging and the computer's smoked this will help him. It saved me, and that's why I'm passing it on to you guys. So, stay tuned for more tips and tricks. As you can see by the wiring and everything on here, something magical is about to happen with this thing. So, you'll just have to stay tuned for that. Smash the subscribe button so you can see what we're building. Uh, drop a comment down below and show that like button some love. I got to get back to wiring this thing, make the magic happen, and you're just going to have to watch another episode of Rico's Garage to see that. I'll catch you later.